Hello people, um, it dawned on me that my making brake videos is lost in the middle of one of my Range Rover restoration things. So I thought I'd do a completely separate tutorial. So if you've seen me make brake bikes before, stop here. There's no swearing in this video, there's no profanity, there might be some innuendo, I don't know. But this video is all about making brake lines up for your standard cars and how you can make them up. Enjoy. Subscribe if you like this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know if you thumbs down. Why? How I might improve, etc, etc, etc. If you want to contact me for work, um, get hold of me through my website, which is linked in the description below, or go to churchhouseclassics, all one word, .co.uk. There's a contact page on there. Or email me at churchhouseclassics at gmail.com. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Right, so in a nutshell, um, it helps if you've got a, 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 a certain amount of parts yourself. What I do here, I buy the reels, 25 feet reels of Cunifer brake line. Um, the reason I use Cunifer is it's a copper nickel alloy, sorry, copper nickel iron alloy. So K-U-N-I-F-E. Three um, metals that are all alloyed together um, and they make a little bit more work resistance so you can bend backwards and forwards I know copper bends backwards and forwards but you can bend this stuff backwards and forwards and it's much easier to work than steel but it does eventually snap so you're not going to stop it from snapping but it's a lot tougher than copper and it's a lot easier to work with than um, steel plus it doesn't rust now the other thing that I've got is a big old box of tools this is my little treasure trove of tools and um, fixings. When it comes to fixings, um, I generally buy um, as good quality as I possibly can. So these ones here are M10. Uh, so metric uh, fitting goes into more modern calipers. Let's say since about 1980, pretty much everything's been metric. Uh, but you need to check. And then prior to that, pretty much everything was imperial. And these ones are 3 8 UNF, 24 TPI. 24 teeth per inch now if we look at these two and what we can see first of all is they are steel so you know if you don't want these things to rust then don't use steel you'll notice that one of these the, the imperial one has got a little sh sleeve on the end of it now the sleeve on the end of it is sometimes quite useful for um, uh, allowing first of all the fixing to go into the, 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 the hole for threading and secondly um, it allows a nice face for the um, for the the flare to sit on the end these ones haven't got that these are cheaper quality i haven't actually used too many of these ones in fact i haven't used any of these ones but just just be aware that when you buy dirt cheap sometimes it isn't always good um, i also keep just about every single old fitting i've ever had i don't know why i do um you've got male fittings obvious reasons and you've got female fittings, for obvious reasons. There is no such thing as a non-binary brake fitting. They are male and female. Okay? Um, right, so, when it comes to tools, we've got all of these marvellous things that have come in kits over the years to bend brake lines, to piss around with them. I don't tend to use any of these anymore. Another thing that's really useful is to get one of these kind of um, crow's foot spanners. Now this one's 7 16 and half inch, I think. No, 9 16 9 16 and 7 16 Really very good for getting around seized brake unions. Because when you've got a bleed nipple and it will not come off, you can see that that is not going to slip on those flats. Okay? Bleed nipples aren't quite so bad because you can more often than not you can get a six-sided socket on them but when you get a brake you know, ferrule let's say like that with a pipe on it then kind of you sometimes need to get that on there now <coughs> where are we oh that might be an imperial one on there i might cut that off because i might need that i'll look at that later on now um other tools so those are the bending tools i tend not to bother with them and i'll explain why in a second um, I've got a straightening tool. You've seen the video for the brake pipe straightener that I made. Very, very useful tool. And then we've got the flare tool. So this is one style of flare tool. This is one that I bought years and years and years ago, and I used it with reasonable degrees of success. It does all manner 
of different sizes of flare. So it's very, very good from that perspective. We have got here, um, it will work with, I'm just going to need to, what's happening here? Then I'll do it like that. You open it up and then you rotate until you get the same size. So I want 3 16 as in 3 16 brake line, 3 16 on both sides. And then the 3 16 pipe goes in here, clamps shut, and then you put a little nobule on the end and, and wind it down. Um, I don't generally favour this style of brake pipe flare anymore because it doesn't dictate how far the pipe goes through. You can't regulate how far the pipe goes through before you start to create the flare. So you can create a flare that's too big. Okay? They're, they're, they're more tricky to use. More errors can be made. So I tend not to use that style. Nothing against it. If I had the time and the patience, I would use that style. This is another style of brake pipe straightener, by the way. Um, I find these things to be utterly useless. Um, really never had any success with them at all, but it's there. So the brake pipe flare tools that I do like are these style. You see them all over the place. Um, they come in uh, three different parts. So this is the main body. The pipe goes in that side and the flare gets created on this side. So what I do is I'll show you how this style works because it's dead easy. Right, let me, if I get all the bits out, and then lay them on the bench, and I can work through what we're going to need to do. Um, I'm going to need a 16mm socket. I can use an adjustable. Let's get a couple of breaking lines. We'll get a male, and we get a female. Can you see? You can see. Great. Okie doke. So here's the bits. So this is the bit that makes the flare. You've got the male union flare. And then if you need to make a female union, you do that first. And then you do that second. And it double flares on the female side. Okay. So the way this works, we've got a pre-straightened piece of line here. First of all, put the union on. Put the union on after you've checked that it actually fits in the device that you're trying to get it into. So make sure the brake union fits into whatever you're making the pipe up for. You'd be amazed how many times I might have made up a brake line and put the wrong bloody fitting on it. Well, I did it once and I learned from that. <clears throat> Next thing you need to do is loosen off the tool, put the brake line in so it goes in and then just lightly crimp it up. Now the brake line, I'm, I'm going to take the union off because there's nothing on the other end of it. But uh, just, just remember that if you're doing, you've already done one end, you need to make sure the union's on before you crimp. Now we've got a blanking plug here. This thing detects, or this thing sets, the depth that the pipe needs to go in. So you can see the pipe in the end there. Actually this pipe's pretty crap because it's got shit all in the end of it. Let's start again from a good end. This one's actually got a hole in it. <laughs> this is just a piece of scrap pipe that I've got sitting lying around on the bench. So again, we'll put the pipe in. It's in <clears throat> far enough. Nip these up by finger so I can move back and forth. And then I put the blanking plug in. Now, as I'm winding the blanking plug in, it's pushing the pipe out until it gets to the right depth. There we are. Once it's at the right depth, I then tighten up the lock nuts to, to clamp the two halves of the crimp tool together. There we are. And then I need to undo the 16mm. Why 16mm? I'd never work that out. 16mm blank. There we are. And now that pipe is set at exactly the right depth in there. Now, when I've taken that blank out, I need to tighten again. Because I don't know, for some reason, this tool, um, I've tried to, uh, 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 when I first started using this thing, I made the flare and it, all it did was push the pipe further in. Now, <clears throat> when you're making the flare, it helps if you've got some sort of lubricant, otherwise you're gonna wear the tool out. So as I say, two different ends on this tool. Let's just clean them up so you can see what's going on here. If you look at the ends, that one's got a pointy end on it. Can you see that? That one's got a pointy end on it. And that one hasn't. That one's got a concave end 
convex, pointy end. There you go. That one's got a nipple, that one's got a hole. Right, so the pin in the middle goes inside the pipe, and then what happens is it forces the flare around, around the pin in the middle. And that's the idea. The whole shape of that thing is designed around that. So what I do is use a little lube. This is, this is actually just red brake um, pipe grease, I guess, because it's not incompatible with brake fluid, so it doesn't matter if a bit gets in the pipe. Wind that in, and then comes the flare bit. So you need to wind that all the way until it stops. Right, so that's right in, not going to go any further. Take that out. And then undo the union. That's just, they're just 10mm nuts on the top here. Now because you created a flare, you need to actually separate the block in order to get it out. And here we have absolutely perfect flare for a male fitting. Now, when you create a brand spanking new flare with a male fitting, okay, you do not need to do these up medievally tight. It's already a double flare because you've already got the, the pipe going out and then back in again. So it's a double flare, and that was perfect. That was as easy as falling down a flight of stairs. The other thing I tend to do on this is sometimes, depending on how you cut the pipe, and we're going to go through that in a second, you might get a little piece of swarf in there. So I do use an airline to go through the end of the pipe just to make sure there's no swarf in there that's going to end up in the uh, caliper or the slave um, and end up you know doing damage to the seals you don't want that oh, oh, oh. right next let's do cutting these little things pipe cutters brilliant little devices <coughs> open them out measure the pipe to exactly where you need it to go Put him on lightly, and that's probably going to help if there's a bend in this. That's how I bend the pipe, to be honest. <laughs> Cunifer, so easy to work. Wind him round, tighten him quarter of a turn, wind him round, tighten him quarter of a turn, wind him round, tighten him quarter of a turn, wind him around, tighten him quarter of a turn. And eventually it goes through the pipe. A nice, clean, burr-free, swarf-free cut. If you use a hacksaw... What you end up doing is creating first of all you'll crush the pipe and secondly you'll just fill the pipe with swarf so don't use a hacksaw use a proper pipe cutting tool and this is a 3 to 22 mil pipe cutter okay um the 3 16 pipe that i'm using is i don't know what's that about four or five mil probably about four or five mil or thereabouts so we'll do a female flare now so i'll put the female fitting on there okay now you see the female fitting actually goes around the bend even on these ones, so these ones are quite, quite loose. Sometimes, if I put the male fitting up there, you probably find the male fitting will not go around there. It won't. So that's why it's quite important to make sure you get these things on before you bend everything and put it in place. Right, where's me tool? Where's me tool? Pinar. So we put the pipe in. We'll nip him up. Um, we'll put the blank in. <coughs> goes blank's gone in pushing the pipe out we'll nip him up exactly the same as doing at the uh, male fitting flare goes take it off bit of lube put the first of all you put the, the, the as if you're making a male fitting flare so you put the one with the, the concave uh, fitting in it so you're going to create exactly the same flare as that one as you've just done so you create that wind him in tighty 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 he's as tight as he's going to go wind him back out again right now without undoing anything we can see the flare inside there. We now turn the device around and we go for the pointy one. And what this effectively does, when you wind the pointy one in there with a bit of lube on it, it crushes that flare. It crushes that, that whole bucket that you've got here. Um, and it forces it flat. And I'll show you that in a second. So we'll wind that in. It doesn't need to go in quite so far. But again, you wind it in until it doesn't go any further. 
that's him done. Right, so that's a nice female flare done now. Let's undo this right off. We need to do a bit more to actually get the flare out there as the flare gravity. Thank you. Wind these back in so I don't lose the pins. That's all done. I give this thing a little clean out after each time I've done brake pipes. Just take it apart, undo the bolts, take the two halves apart. You're awake. Now, what have we got here? So, again, we created a flare. You can see a little bit of swarf around the edges there. See that? So I just make sure that I clean any swarf off this brake pipe. That's good. And now you can see that it's crushed that male flare inside out. So it's created a double flare for a female brake pipe union. Okay. Now I've got that's a metric fitting that one. So if I go now and I wind what I want is a metric fitting to go in there. Uh, there you go in there, these are metric. So I wind a metric fitting in there and I use this tool here. Actually, no, it's not going to work on that. It's going to work on that, though. I don't know what size these male unions are. So by tightening these things up now, and this is a brand new flare, and it's on uh, quality fitting, so you really don't want to be doing these things up medievally tight. I mean, that is probably as tight as I'd want this thing to go. You're not too tight. You don't end up stripping threads and crushing the flare too much. So it's actually going to um, uh, destroy the flare. Now that's gone in. That is as tight as that's going to get. We'll take them apart now and look at what that's done with that flare. Now I've done the union up. Oh, fingers are cold today. I'll take that feather out. And there you see, all it's really done is it's bedded that flare into... You don't have to do that, by the way, before fitting these these pipes. It's just demonstrating how that male fitting fits on there. As far as the female fitting is concerned, it goes exactly the same way over the top of that. If you screw that into a caliper, in fact, I've got a caliper. One second. There I was an Imperial Land Rover fitting here. I'll wind it in here. And in he goes. Inny, 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 inny. Oh, the other thing that's useful to do, by the way, is before you fit the fitting, wind the fitting right into the device it's going into and make sure it doesn't bottom out. If that thing bottoms out, i.e. if there is no gap between the flats and the device you're winding it into, then it ain't long enough and you get different lengths of fitting. So you need to make sure that there's a gap, okay? When there's a gap, that means that once you put the flare on it, the flare is going to bottom out in the hole. If it doesn't bottom out in the hole, then you're relying entirely on the threads to stop the fluid leaking. And because the, the flare is not pushed against the inside, it will never seal. Oh, oh. So that's that. That, that. That's how you make the brake fittings. Okay, you can see that's gone in there nicely. Again, I don't do these things up medievally tight. You don't need to. The Cunifer works really nicely, really easily. You don't need to go absolutely berserk when tightening these things up. Um, be aware an aluminium um, a slave like this one and a steel thread are going to seize together. So if you possibly can, use different metals or use similar metals um, or put some sort of lubricant on here that's going to stop it, that's going to be brake um, fluid compatible, like this red brake fluid grease, friendly grease. This is just red. Bleh. I've got a big tub of it at home. It's, it's red grease that works with brake calipers and brake seals. Oh, oh. So that's how you do that. Right, now, how do I bend brake pipes? Using my fingers normally, um, or using something really handy, like, let's say, the handle of this. So let's say I wanted to create quite a tight radius from there. So I, I'd hold that, and then holding that in place, or if I was to put it in the vise, if I come over here to the vise, oh, we've got the vise. If I were to clamp the the nut into the vise and then put that against the top and work the pipe around it you see how I've worked that around you probably didn't see because my hand was in the way but I've literally just worked that around the handle undoing and what we've got there 
there's quite a nice radius that hasn't squashed so it's quite a tight radius and works beautifully and that's how you bend brake lines as well now you see how I straighten them and you see how I bend them and then once that all goes on that might need adjusting a little bit so you can see there it's not quite straight so if, if I was being particularly pedantic or if it needed to be um, I would more often than not fit it onto where it's going to go to and then start straightening things out so so if I wanted to get that in line completely in line again just once it's been bent there it is it's all in line now so that is it it's a very very quick tutorial on, on how I do brake pipe fittings male and female 3 16 pipes imperial and metric and how to use that particular tool which you can find online these are really good choose your parts buy, buy the best fittings you, you can don't don't buy cheap never 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 buy cheap if it's cheap and it looks the same as the expensive parts it's because it's been made somewhere where they can do it a lot cheaper using cheaper materials um, and it may not necessarily be good if I was to undo this fella by the way it's got a nice comfortable handle on it's a nice solid tool this one part of an expression for now <laughs> Bad, Richard. Bad. When we take this apart, you can see here where the brake pipe goes in and is clamped in the middle. You can see the mating face there where it creates the flare. And you can see that when this goes in, if I push that in there, you can see how when that goes in, it forces onto the brake pipe and then forces the brake pipe into. And you can see at the moment, you can see how far away we are. So we're still two mil, three mil, and it bottoms right out and clamps the brake pipe tight against this end of the, of the housing. And that's how it works. This needs a good clean now, because I've used it a few times and it's a bit greasy, so I'm gonna give it a good clean. Um, but it works well, it's a really good tool. Um, I've, been, I've used this for every single brake pipe on my car, the 1993 um, Range Rover. I've used it on every single brake line on the 1972 car I did. Every single brake line on Southpaw every single brake line so far on the 109 van and others um, and it hasn't worn out yet it's done a fair amount of work so these are pretty resilient and as i say they're much much easier to use than these fellas this style which i bought a thousand years ago because i needed to make a brake line up for a land rover so i guess when it comes to buying kits from uh, various companies companies do kits specifically for a car Especially classic cars let's say you've got I don't know Triumph Stag go and buy a complete box of all the brake lines required for a Triumph Stag what I've generally found from my experience is the brake lines are always too long um, they're often made out of copper um, and while the fixings on the end may be the right measurement they may not necessarily be at the quality you want them to be at um, there's a couple of companies that I've used in the past good, good quality fittings Quality brass fittings, quality steel fittings, male fittings, female fittings, quality bleed nipples. Um, and it, it really is a case of buying the best you can afford. Don't scrimp and scrape when it comes to safety critical items such as brakes. You don't want to be going there. It's a bad idea. Um, also, it goes without saying, if you don't know what you're doing when it comes to brakes, or you're unsure when it comes to brakes, don't do it. Leave it for a professional. And I don't mean that rudely towards you or insulting you um, it's just that something that is safety critical if you were to have a nasty accident god forbid um, and someone were to be injured badly god forbid um, you really don't want to find that when you know the authorities investigate your vehicle they find you fucked up on the brake build so the information i've given you assumes you assumes that you're uh, competent understand what you're doing with brakes but all i'm doing here is saying um, that you can make your own brake lines up, custom make your own brake lines up using quality fittings to fit onto your car. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe for more, etc, etc, etc. Thank you.